What's up, everybody? Thralls Metal here once again. I'm the Croc Man. I'm Jam and John. And we are back with another retro review and one we've been meaning to do for a while. Kind of got put off. Uh, we were going to do this actually before we went to Maryland Death Fest last year. But, I mean, there were so many damn releases to cover. Yeah, dude. Last year was so chock full of shit that there was just no way to really squeeze this in in a timely fashion like we wanted to. But this has always been on the top of our list. And honestly, doing it now kind of makes more sense for a reason. So we are going to go over the Lone Studio full length from Finnish Death Metal Legends, Demolich, with their Lone album, Nespyth. And we're going to go over some of the extra stuff, too. Now... Why it's actually significant now is because this actually came out in February on the 8th of 1993. So we are at the 30 year anniversary almost of this insane fucking album. This is going to be a challenge to describe because even as much as like, you know, all the technical weird shit that we listen mm -hmm. to, Demolich is kind of something else. Yeah, nothing that I can think of. I mean, there's a bunch obviously that compares to it, but I mean, it's not it. It's no, not quite. It's it. really not. Like elements, you can pull elements from other bands to say, yeah, kind of sounds like this. But honestly, this band is kind of their own thing, and that makes them very alluring, as well as challenging to actually describe. But little backstory behind this band: formed in 1990 in Finland in a town or city that I cannot pronounce. Or, you know, I mean, I really can't pronounce anything that goes on in that country. <laughs> so I'm going to be trying with the names here. But, uh, yeah, uh, formed by drummer Miko Venus, I think that's how you say it. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. A lot of, lot of apologies here. <laughs> Guitarist, vocalist, Antti Bowman, or Bauman. I'm not entirely sure how to say that, even though that's like one of the most easy ones here. Sorry. Sorry again. Bassist, Juicy uh, Terra's... Vita, I think. Verta. Terrace Verta? Sorry. Oh my god. Uh, these are actually like relatively easy names that I've come across <laughs> in terms of finish too, and I'm still fucking them up. This would be the early formation of Demolich. They would actually record the Regurgitation of Blood demo in 1991. After that, they increased their ranks with guitarist Aki Haitonen. Sorry. <laughs> There's an umlaut out in there. I don't know what it does. I think it's decorative. Regardless of how you say it or how you don't, I'm pretty sure I said it how you don't. Uh, that lineup would record the Four Instructive Tales of Decomposition, also came out in 1991. Now, Jesse exits in 1992, but the rest of the band manages to record both the Somewhere Inside the Bowels of Endlessness and the Echo demos in 92, with Antti and Aki both playing bass on those demos. So later in 1992, Ville Koistinen, I think? Sorry. Maybe? Sorry again. <laughs> he joins on bass. Now, this would be the lineup that will record Nesbeth. So they got together, they broke their songs. A lot of these songs ended up being reworked from the demos, you know, kind of fine-tuned to be as strange and technical as they possibly could be. These songs would be recorded between Christmas and New Year's Eve in 1992, produced by Tuomo Voltanen, I think, maybe. I don't know, that one doesn't have a lot of umlauts. I might have got that one right, maybe. Sorry, maybe. Yeah, maybe sorry. And then on February 8th, 1993, they released Nespyth on Necropolis Records. And I didn't really get into this band until much later. Like, honestly, I would say right around the time that we started the channel. Like, yeah. I had heard rumblings about this band. Technical death metal fans have always heralded this band as, like, kind of like, you know, the Mount Rushmore fucking band in terms of technical play. But it's also very much lauded by fans of just old school death metal, too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, all the curiosity kind of got to me. I picked up the uh, reissue of it because finding an original of this album is pretty fucking tough. But, uh, holy shit. I don't think my brain was ready for this. And I've listened to, like, Tech Death for fucking years. Yeah, so have I. I've only heard this record actually once before tonight when we, we played it. Uh, and it blew my mind then, and I still don't... <laughs> you gotta be fucking kidding me. Like, come on. Come this... on. It, it, this is actually, I would say, one of the most unique albums in terms of, like, technical metal in general. Their riff structure is otherworldly. Lots of atonal crawling, lots of, like, like off-time melodies squeezed in the riff. 
they're constantly sort of just crawling and oozing and rhythmically this this album is just insane like it packs a lot of groove and it has like really cool blast beats but these transitions they're sharp they're very it, angular strange it, it's like the the voivod of tech death because uh, i immediately you know of course you listen to this and you're like oh this is like immolation but then you, you think about immolation doing stuff like this and, and you're like Ugh. it kind of makes immolation sound like demolish light yeah like come on and i love immolation immolation still is you know like you know like just technical and creepy and they know how to rake great riffs this man is that but it's like the riff equivalent of fucking calculus like it's to the point where like i don't know how they put this together and that is maybe possibly only outdone by the otherworldly fucking vocals of anti bowman oh my god these are deep just disgusting gurgles it sounds like they have a giant humanoid bullfrog that fronts the fucking band right but he's doing an impression of cookie monster who has a sinus infection and bronchitis yeah i actually i was just there i just had uh uh, sinus infection, bronchitis, and pneumonia. Was, and you sounded nothing like him. And it him. was pretty much awesome. Yeah, and I still sounded nothing like him. So this guy is on another page of existence. But that adds, like, another layer to this sort of otherworldly death metal sound. Like, you have this constant barrage of these crawling, strange atonal riffs and harmonies. Like, how they harmonize these riffs, like, they're just even more strange. But you add these vocals on top, and, like... Almost like the human element just kind of fucking leaves the room because it doesn't even sound like a human being anymore. And these are not effects. This is his fucking voice. I think I could talk for days about the riff work and it still wouldn't make sense. But I don't know why I didn't put two and two together when we reviewed another band uh, late last year. Phobophilic. I know where Phobophilic gets it now. At least some of their influence has to come from Demolich because they're the only other band I can think of that write riffs like this or close to it that are like a consistent, melodic, like crawl, giant riff. I don't know. I don't know what to say. I mean, honestly, like I would say like during this band's time, like, you know, when this came out in the early 90s, like I would say Gorguts and Immolation mm -hmm. were definitely in the mix. But a relative unknown from the U.S., Time Ghoul, is also very similar. And, I mean, right now, like, Phoba Felix is a good comparison. Blood Incantation is a good comparison. Hell, even Tomb Mold is. Yep. But at the same time, like, it's still not quite to this level. The first two songs, and screw you on all of these <laughs> titles. <laughs> when the Sun Drank the Weight of Water and the 16th Six-Tooth Son of Four four regional dimensions unnamed unnamed why why i mean i get it you know what you probably want the song titles to be as chaotic as the song this record wastes no time there's no intros there's no nothing it just immediately explodes into a barrage of the nastiest dirtiest crawling riffs i've ever heard in my life and it's constant it is yep. a constant barrage of them only taking breaks to maybe like do like you know like a standard death metal tremolo riff a blast beat, but most of the time it's these... But even yeah. so, it's just one of these riffs right after the other, and the place where the drums come in is always a little bit different every time. So, like, it's still the same riff with, like, a little addendum added on there, but the drums come in on, like, the second beat, and then the third beat, and then it volleys back and forth between the two. And already, if you're not completely lost and kind of mind-fucked by the end of these two songs, I don't know. I don't know what's wrong. It only gets better though. And that's the strange thing, like, all right, there's a lot of like technical bands that I'll listen to. I was like, yeah, this is just like a bit much and it takes me out of it. Yeah. This is one of those ones where this is so goddamn much. Like it isn't even a bit much, but I am like drawn in by it. Like there's this want to really understand it. And when you get like stuck in some really cool grooves and really cool hooks, like namely within the Chamber of Whispering Eyes, which I'm reasonably sure whispering eyes like a uh, fucking euphemism for vagina in some circles. Anyway, it's a hell of a chamber to be in. But uh, sure. that actually has like some cool bouncy, groovy hooks. Mm -hmm. And like, as this starts off, like it starts off maddening. Absolutely maddening. Like, this isn't like starter death metal at all. Like, you don't go from Cannibal Corpse to this. There are steps for damn sure. But 
when you get into this album, after you kind of settle into the sound, these guys sort of open up the playbook a little bit more and include like some really clever melodic hooks. Like they're not necessarily mm -hmm. just distant hooks and like very atonal crawling. You get some legit cool like melodic solos and melodic leads on top of the riffs. And when they decide to bring it down and get like very heavy, almost kind of doomy because Finland is known for a, like a nasty death doom sound, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it gets suffocating. Like. They change modes completely and throw in like big droning doomy riffs. Namely on songs, and I'm just gonna read them directly off this fucking <laughs> paper. Cause I couldn't even write the songs in my notes cause they take up too much space cause they're fucking short stories. Anyway, the song Inherited Bowel Levitation Reduced Without Any Effort. That is the full song title. And I actually read the lyrics and it sounds like a Taco Bell inspired existential fucking nightmare. It's it's ridiculous. It's as ridiculous as the song is, but there are giant like doom laden droning riffs. Like that is almost the only time they slow down when it comes down to just this constant barrage of crawling riffs. They throw in like big doomy chugs and occasionally let like the lead guitar melodies go on top of that and it just creates this twisted atmosphere, especially when you have this demonic bullfrog telling you about the time that his intestines shot out of his asshole and through the ceiling. I think that's what the lyric said. I don't know. It was kind of fucked up. Apparently that's the same way his father died though. I got oh. that much. Oh. Well that explains a lot. Does it? No. <laughs> <laughs> Another song that does that, at least to me, that I thought that had a little bit more catchy and slash maybe doomy riffs. I can't even say that because it, it's not like any of that's prevalent, but the song uh, Ereshkinol, I think that's how you say it. You, I think, which might be an instrumental, I don't know. You know what, because I thought that song had not only one of the catchiest riffs, but it's so captivating, which is weird because something of this magnitude, of this technical magnitude, you'd think would be like, you'd abandon it. You'd yeah. just be like, fuck this, but man, Catchy, chuggy goodness. I would almost say that this band is like the Melvins of death metal. Like pretty much just pissing in the face of contemporary song structure, but also delivering kind of a sludgy sort of vibe to it. Like the guitars on here have, like it's definitely a death metal tone, but there's like this sort of bottom heavy sludge to it. Like it's definitely not like HM2, sort of like crackly fucking, you know, buzzsaw. It's more just sort of deep and just kind of murky sounding. I don't know, I get a lot of Morbid Angel vibes from I mean, it, actually. Like Covenant era Morbid Angel vibes. Yeah, that'd be kind of um, close. Yeah, but on crack. Or Mescaline, or, or the, like, I think Hallucinogenics would probably be the, the thing here, because there's no way you come up with a song title like, the planet that once used to absorb flesh in order to achieve divinity and immortality, in quotes, suffocated to the flesh that it desired. That is literally an entire story. Like, I didn't need to read the lyrics to figure out what happened to this uh, planet. Because literally it just said the same thing in the lyrics, except surprisingly just a little bit longer. Because honestly, like, vocals aren't on here all the time. A lot of this is music. But when yes. the vocals come in, it just, again, adds this strange inhuman layer on it. But it's weird because they're not so forward in the mix that they take away from anything. Like, if anything, the vocals sit a little bit farther back in the mix, which makes him all the more creepy when he does do his, like, gurgle weird thing. You're just like, what the fuck was that? Occasionally they move him back and forth. Like, I know on uh, the Echo replacement, again, there's a lot of, like, parentheses at the end. Because, I like that track, too. Uh, it's a great track, but I don't know why they need to add another word. But, you know, it, whatever. They have enough words here. But, um... Like, it's interesting to hear like the vocals sit back in there, and that's one of the few times where the, it seemed like there were some effects on the vocals. When he's up front growling, or rather gurgling, I don't even know if it's I don't know what he's doing. I don't know what it's, that it's is. It's crazy. But they sit like just kind of in the right spot, and again, they add this like creepy cosmic horror sort of vibe. And coupling that with, again, the strange nature of their music and the transitions that come out of nowhere, but they know how to draw you in with a hook and then release you back into the wild that is their fucking music again. That keeps it so fucking engaging. And songs don't really like lead in or like fade out, they just start and stop. In mm -hmm. fact, they just start in a flurry of just absolute insanity and then essentially sound like they just collapse from exhaustion afterwards. 
So that would make sense. Yeah, yeah, like when it comes down to like additional atmosphere in here, there really isn't. It's all created by the music, and I can't imagine throwing another layer of anything like ambience or like synths or anything on there. Like, I think it would get lost. It would get lost. Yeah, because this album is very busy. Like, it never really stops. There's not a lot of pauses in here mm -hmm. in terms of, like, cleaner moments. Like, you just get one wild transition into the next. Strange off-time rhythms. Like, as soon as you feel as though you're centered in on a good headbangable moment, there comes, like, this little off-time fill and an accent and, like, some extra little beetly wah that pops in. I was like, I, I, was, I was so close. I was right, I was, I was, I I was was there, right there. I could feel it. And, and then and you fucked me changed up. it. But that's okay. I, right off the bat, just described this as somewhere between Immolation, Voivod, and Necrophages, The Last Demolich. And, and that's pretty much where I'm at for all of it. And I have to say, I think this album ends with one of their catchiest songs, Raped, Embalmed, Beauty Sleep. What the fuck is that even? I don't even know. But the song is absolutely catchy, and I think at like, this point it just feels like this starts off even crazier and then slowly starts to morph into something that is a little bit more of an earworm but like still very complex and that would kind of continue on later when we get into like some of the stuff that happened yeah, after yeah, this yeah. album but that last song is flat out catchy it sounds like the most technical moments of every 90s death metal album you ever heard combined but somehow it generates a really fucking cool hook. Well, and the way it does it too, so it, it take all those things combined, but then make it into something that's almost thrashy, which is what makes that song so unique because there's not a lot of things where it hones on and say like a specific genre throughout. It's mostly just chaos. But when you get to the end and you get kind of like a thrashy moment, even though that riff is balls to the wall insane, it's just something to kind of latch onto as you finish out the album. Yeah, like, the most, like, common things in terms of, like, common denominators of death metal, like, yeah, you have your blast beats, but they're more, like, accented sections. Like, this is mostly groove-laden, but when it comes down to the grooves, again, it's very off-time and very unpredictable. But occasionally, like, hearing, like, a thrashy gallop, like the last track, that kind of centers you back in. And, again, that was the thing about this album, is as chaotic as it is, it always had, like, some sort of interesting, very unique hook that would draw you in further rather than like sort of just like throw you out again like no nah, no nah, we're just you know too weird for you hmm. and no you're not no i i listened to this album multiple times now and i absolutely fucking love it like this is one of those challenging listens that i i really enjoy like i want to understand more about it like this doesn't make me want to play guitar because i'll never be able to achieve this in my fucking lifetime yeah no way but I it's fascinating musicianship, fascinating songwriting. It's very unique. It is kind of a one-of-a-kind album that you definitely hear influence all over the death metal spectrum mm -hmm. now. But overall, I got to give this four and a half stars. Like, this is fucking amazing. Like, the vocals are unique. The riff structure is unique. It is constantly bombarding you with just some of the most insane songwriting and transitions ever. But somehow it all comes together well. And surprisingly, it is catchy for what it is. And I'm not saying again, like people that are not death metal fans are gonna think, oh, this is fucking pleasant. They're not, No, they're not. Nope. But for people that are like really into old school death metal, I mean, this album is, you know, loved for a reason. Like it found some sort of like cool balance between old school death metal and more technical play and found hooks. And it's, it's just wild to hear them because like, again, it, it's such a chaotic listen. Like, I still get this, like, weird sort of confused haze every time I jam this album, but I constantly go back. So, yeah, this album's absolutely fantastic. If you have never jammed it, be warned, you're in for some fucking wild shit, but, man, it is fucking worth it. Uh, that's a four and a half for me, too, and it's, it's, it's pushing, like, five, but I'm not going to quite go there. First of all, like we said, not for the novice listener. I feel like in the 25 years, you know, or so that I've been a really heavy, you know, hardcore death metal fanatic, I feel like the culmination of all that leads to this album. First of all, for 1993, fucking bravo, because none of this, none of this existed. I don't think anything quite mm. like this existed in... Any, anything remotely close to there. What, you had Morbid Angel back then? Yeah, you Covenant had, was 
not quite this. Yeah, no. Immolation was going. Immolation was going, but it still no. wasn't quite there. Like, you didn't have a whole lot to work with. And you, know, you had Demolage come out and just like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, as much of a challenging listen as it might be, good God, was it ever catchy. It's like, I'm not sure what the hell is happening, but oddly enough, I want to hear more of it to try and make sense of it. Even though the more of it I hear doesn't allow me to make any more sense of it, it's still something that catches my ear enough to go, okay, that was cool. Ooh, that was really cool. Ooh, that was really cool. And that's how I spent the entire album. And as I said, I've only heard this once before, and this is definitely something I'll probably have to revisit more. But man, for your one and only studio release, fucking yeah. I could gush all day, I'm pretty sure, about this album and, and not really make heads or tails of it, but I definitely want to hear more of it. It's amazing. This is just an amazing listen. Just flat out fucking amazing. If I was to make any knock about this is that the songs do kind of run together, but honestly, it, it tracks like one giant fucking amazing unique riff fest. So yeah. that really doesn't hurt it that much, but that is maybe like the one complaint because the songs do kind of sound similar, but they sound similar in such a fucking cool way that... Like, nah, play it again. Yeah. I, don't, I don't care. And the one grip I had were maybe the drums were just a little trebly, just a little too much high end on them. But once again, the drum work is so fucking amazing that it doesn't really matter. And we did listen to the reissued version because that is the easier one to find. Mm -hmm. Apparently, when they remastered it from the 16 bit version, they just fucking brick walled it. And yeah, it's kind of what you're left with. Unless you have an original version of this, which good on you, I couldn't find one for less than like fucking a hundred bucks Ooh. yeah no it's it's rare and rare for a reason again this was their only studio release so we get to the part of what happened well this came out and then not long after the band broke up they had some issues with necropolis records in terms of getting paid and you know uh that's unfortunately such a common thing that happens in the music world especially with you know underground bands oh yeah so they ended up breaking up but that wasn't necessarily the end. The band actually would reform in 2005, start playing shows again, and actually did record some more material. Though that material did not get released until much later. In fact, it didn't get released until 2014 on their compilation, 20th Adversary of Emptiness. There was another compilation after that called Emptiness of Vanishing Comp, which included a lot of demos and such, which the you other know, demos are also really fucking good too, if you have a chance to check those out as well. If you have the reissue of Nesbit that's on uh, Extreme Music, I believe that includes all their demo material. But the reason those songs didn't come out until 2014 is because they broke up again in 2006. But this unfortunately would be a bit of a theme because they would reunite once again in 2010 and then break up the same year. But they reunited in 2014 and so far have stayed together and have even had some rumblings about them doing new music. They've done, you know, MDF multiple times. They did it last year. We saw them last year. It was we saw them. Awesome. They're honestly, one of my favorite bands I saw yep. and yep. that entire fucking fest. Yep. They were so goddamn good. But we were just going to cap it off with Nespite, but we found out, you know, like, hey, those three new songs might be worth going over. And honestly, I hadn't listened to them because the comp that they're on is kind of hard to find too, but I'm gonna look around a little bit more. They did re-release those three songs that they did on the Vanishing Sessions EP, but it's only on tape, and that came out in 2021. But uh, we decided, like, well, fuck it, let's just go over these last yeah. three tracks, and Jesus Christ, man. Three tracks, first one, The Faces Right Below the Skin of the Earth, doesn't matter because holy shit, the song's absolutely amazing. And the other two, Emptiness of Vanishing and Vanishing of Emptiness, because you need one without the other or something. I, I don't yes. know. Yeah. Nothing makes sense lyrically or anything Lee with this band sometimes. But these three songs are amazing. Yes. The mix is somehow more hefty. It seems to be a little bit more straightforward ish. I don't want to say that. Like the chaos is still there, but there's a lot more to latch on to hook-wise, yeah. groove-wise. While the riffs are still chaotic, it doesn't switch around so much that you're lost. The, the measures seem to be a little bit longer. The transitions seem to be, like, less technical. I mean, it isn't as though their transitions were so wonky they completely, like, threw you off. Like, they're hitting every note they're supposed to in the right time, in the right fucking order. It's just my pathetic human brain can't keep up with it. Fair. Here... It's just a little bit more streamlined. And 
without sacrificing like really anything mm -hmm. other than maybe like a virgin in a temple. That would make more sense. But Vanishing of Emptiness, the last track, that's where that really fucking yep. comes up because yep. it's a little bit more straightforward. It's a little bit more like riffy in the sense that these riffs are a little bit more like, I wouldn't say like commonplace in death metal, but they make more sense to just a straightforward death metal fan. Yeah, there's even, I think at the end of Vanishing of Emptiness, the last like probably minute, I would almost call it a breakdown. Almost. It's a little bit more doomy. It's definitely, again, probably one of the most straightforward things I think has popped out of this band ever is in the last minute of that song. Yeah. And, and like, we were kind of waiting for it to go, like, weird and off time, and it kind of just hung on to that fucking groove, and, man, like, dude, what a fucking song. And yeah. Emptiness of Vanishing, the one before it, actually has, like, some thrashy sections, like some more old-school, like, thrash metal blast beats. You know, these three songs, I mean... I really wish they would have recorded more, and you know there again have been rumblings of them possibly doing a follow up to Nest by Please, yeah, but I mean again, there's kind of always been rumors. Like it's not like to the point where it's like necrophagist rumors, <laughs> where like oh, they're, 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 coming. they're in the oh, studio, yeah, like rolled you know, again. The, no, they're not. Hmm. You know that that band has been you know super done for a long time, but this band still shows up at fests and plays amazing live sets and cracks some of the driest fucking Finnish humor on the planet. Oh my god, yes. They're, they're absolutely yep. hilarious. Like, if you can find footage of MDF from 2022 with Demolition <laughs> Set, just listen to all the crazy shit that uh, Auntie's saying. <laughs> it, it is, it's real dry, it's, it's almost Bill Murray delivery. Yeah, it's, it's like death metal of the office. <laughs> it's fucking amazing. But yeah, there is possibly still, like, a little bit of hope for some future stuff from this because this band needs to go on like this is one of those albums like you're like how is there only one like i feel like this should have been a whole litany of like just killer releases like uh, maybe a discography on par with like immolations fucking destructively amazing discography like there should be more of this i mean you figure this time around, at least, they played MDF, and then right after MDF, they did another, like, off tour. I don't know, maybe with the great positive response that they got, maybe they were like, fuck it, let's just do it. I hope that's the case. I mean, I can't imagine anyone giving them a negative response if they had heard them before. That's just me, though. But, yeah, that is kind of the open-ended end of uh this review like in terms of their future it is up to them where they go from here i say go for it but that's just me right. but yeah uh as it stands we are left with one fucking genre bending brain melting fucking album and it is glorious with every fucking listen mm -hmm. so if you enjoyed this review give it a thumbs up and if you're new to the channel subscribe because we do stuff like this all, all the time. time we are also on patreon if you'd like to help us out there there's a link down below to thrallsmetal.com our store is there we do have merch we are kind of running low we do need to restock on that mm -hmm. but our patreon link is down there so if you'd like to help us out there click the link also denver death fest if you watched probably the last video we did you know that we found a venue as quick as we lost a venue, we found another venue. And this venue, not only did we find it, but they actually found us and said, hey, we 100% want to host your festival here. So Denver Death Fest is back on. By the time you see this video, I'm hoping that you'll get at least the first wave of bands announced. Like, we're, we're on it. We're on it. It's definitely coming. And the last couple days, they've been kicking around uh, some really awesome bands, which I, I can't say yet. But, uh, I mean, it, it's going to be a fucking festival. There's sponsors now. Like, it's a whole big ordeal, and I'm really, really stoked and honored to be a part of this. So hang tight for that shit, because it's definitely coming. And I believe the three-day passes are only 60 bucks for 30 fucking bands. You can't get any better than that. So if you're in that area, or even if you're not in that area, and you just want to see what the hell we're capable of, come on out. And, of course, thank you all so much for liking, subscribing, following all that stuff it fucking means the world to us it really does uh it's just been amazing watching this channel grow and you know all the cool things that have happened here like you know doing that massive stream about metal elitism that was one of the coolest things i think yep. we've done i had a lot of fun with that you know 
I, I love this fucking metal community out there. Like, I think YouTube is, you know, an awesome fucking platform to, like, you know, share all sorts of cool metal shit. I mean, of course, other shit, too, but, I mean... And who knew? Let's just talk about the metal stuff. You know, I've been watching YouTube for so long, since pretty much the internet first started really becoming the internet, I was watching YouTube. And who knew that it was such an awesome platform for that, and you could build, in essence, a, a family out of it, which is what we've come to find. We've made a lot of awesome friends from YouTube and it, it just keeps coming and you guys keep bringing the thunder and for some reason you keep tuning in still which is still mind-boggling to me because I know who we are yeah <laughs> but, but there's uh, porn out there you could be watching porn right now you could be you could be watching Pornhub or a couple jackasses talking about metal and you guys for some reason watch the couple jackasses talking about metal which we appreciate thank you so much from the bottom of both of our hearts. I think everybody at Thralls, we, yeah. uh, we we really appreciate it, you guys. So with that, once again, we're going to thank you because this is that part of the video, and we mean it. Thank you. And we will catch you later.